in many ways, all of the promises of IoT connected devices, Internet on Internet of Things devices, from driverless cars to all of the sensors that IoT connected devices are going to depend upon, that's all going to ride upon a 5G network. So it's critically important that the United States and on a broader level, the West get 5G right and lead the world in this development. Uh, when I hear the telecom industry talk about it, they're not really talking about 5G. 5G is not really about um, faster speeds. Um, it's really about building an industrial internet that provides for automation, self-driving cars, industry 4.0. Even since like, every major technological innovation, if not invented in America, we got to set the rules. And you can go through computing, you can go through satellite, you can go through the internet, you can go through telecom. I think we need to go ahead and provide ubiquitous, high-speed broadband across the whole country. Make the same commitment that Franklin Roosevelt made in the 1930s with rural electrification. We can do that now. I think there are things that we should be doing during the pandemic where we actually allow existing internet service providers to turn up the power so there's additional relief provided. Anything that smacks an industrial policy, but if we don't rethink that, I don't like. I'm all for open markets. I don't like the idea of government picking and choosing winners, but I do think, at least in terms of directionally setting the tone and being willing to put some capital behind that, my fear is that China's both focus plan, their ability to help set standards, and their willing to put real capital at risk will mean that um, we could come up with short end and stick on a number of these companies collaborative investing tools, public-private investing tools, potentially multilateral investing tools. And in many ways, you know, we will probably need to do more. I mean, earlier in this the 5G debate, there was some discussion about much larger American investment into some of the existing players to have a competitive. I've worked with John Cornyn, for example, on a, on a chips bill on the semiconductor industry, where we're talking about you know, tens of billions, which still look small in comparison to what Huawei is doing, but tens of billion dollars to support uh, domestic semiconductor. But there was this kind of classic federal battle of who's going to take the lead. Is it going to be NIST? Is it going to be NTIA? Is it going to be FCC? And we've been we've been working through lead the world in this development. Unfortunately, I would argue through a variety of twists and turns from the wireless industry over the last 20 years, you know as well as I, the industry has morphed and on the equipment side, we no longer even have an American provider on 5G. And what I think has happened, and I say this respectively to the industry, is that we in the United States and on a broader notion, we, the West writ large, we're so used to leading in wireless, so used to setting the rules, the protocols, the procedures, the standards, that we kind of fell asleep at the switch. Interesting things. Number one, there's, uh, there's a lot of private capital that's very anxious to invest in infrastructure. They're kind of on the sidelines right now because there are not enough projects that are ready to be financed. And secondly, there are also barriers to the private sector coming in to fund, uh, finance the uh, public infrastructure system. On publicly is we're focusing on autonomous systems. And uh, clearly one purpose of autonomous systems is self-driving cars. There are others. Uh, and we sort of see it as the mother of all AI projects. Surely the opening vistas of space promise high costs and hardships, as well as high reward. So it is not surprising that some would have us stay where we are a little longer, to rest, to wait. But this city of Houston, this state of Texas, this country of the United States was not built by those who waited and rested and wished to look behind them. This country was conquered by those who move forward, and so will space. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept. The energy, the faith, the devotion, 
which we bring to this endeavor will light our country and all who serve it. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country.